What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Welcome to Wednesday's discussion. So Monday and Tuesday are topics. So on Monday, we talked about some shenanigans with uh, Revo and um, uh, Anonymous Sudan doing some potential attacks in the, within, I guess, what have already transpired uh, in the EU, attacking the SWIFT um, uh, system for, for banking. On Tuesday, we discussed uh, how uh, ransomware gang was able to infiltrate uh, some federal agencies as well as a bunch of civilian companies and how we think that it was never their intent <laughs> to attack the government, but now they, they've uh, they poked a bear. So that's definitely an interesting uh, discussion that we had. Uh, and then Fridays, we talk about everything else. So movies, books, games, are like that stuff. So definitely tune in for that. So without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this article is from InfoSecurity Magazine uh, by Kevin Peralt, and it's titled EU Passes Landmark Artificial Intelligence Act. So I, I just want to say the EU, they seem to be ahead of the game in a lot of this stuff when it comes to cyber. So good on them. Um, but this one right here, um, the EU has an Artificial Intelligence Act, and believe it or not, they actually introduced this in April of 2021, right? So um, here we are in, in June of 2023, and, and we've talked about, well, I've talked about this, about, you know, Skynet taking over, right? Whether it's going to be BARD or, or ChatGPT, whatever it's going to be, right? It'll be one of them. But they were working on this two years ago. So they had the foresight to be like, hey, we think this can be an issue. Um, we need to put safeguards in place. Um, so uh, it's it's actually official now to where they have the, they actually call it the Artificial Intelligence Act. Like there's no getting around. It doesn't have a, a quippy name or anything like that. Like that's exactly what it is. And, and so what they're doing, again, uh, it's just measures to control foundational models when it comes to AI, right? So um, what they're doing is they're looking at different risks. So um, it, th this is a little weird for me, but they the, the low side of it, they call it the, let's see if I can find it here. The low and minimal risk AI tools would not be regulated, right? So um, they say the the limited risk tools would, be, would, would need to be transparent. So to me, it seems like if you're going to do it, just go full bore with it, right? So like when you say low and minimal risks, like something you may think is low and minimal um, may graduate to be a little bit more, right? Especially if there's no risk with it, right? So you don't know you don't know what these companies are going to do that are coming up with this, these different AIs. Like they're going to be like, okay, well, if it's low and minimal risk, we could do this, that, and the third, and you don't know how it'll graduate up, right? Which your hope is that they're tracking it, and then when it gets to a certain level, that they say, oh, okay, well, now we have to do these different practices, right? Like we have to make sure you're doing this, that, and the third, because it's going to be strictly regulated. Um, but what they're doing is they're going to have a database of general purpose and high-risk AI systems to explain where, where, when, and how they're being deployed in the EU, right? So there's going to be a massive undertaking, right? Especially in this day and age. And when it comes to the EU, especially over in like London, like they 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 do a lot. Um, they do a lot of protection when it comes to cybersecurity, right? Because they have a lot of like, um, I don't want to say like a lot of monitoring of people, but they have a lot of CCTV cameras and things of that nature to where uh, these are things that they take they take serious, right? Like even though they 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 want to have the security of having the CCTV and, and monitoring and things of that nature, they also want to make people aware of what is happening with their information and how they're being monitored, right? So that's kind of along. I don't want to say it's kind of along the lines, but this is the same type of thing, right? So like any AI that has un unacceptable risk, what they determine to be unacceptable risk is going to be banned altogether, right? So they actually have, and I didn't get a chance to read through it, but um, the Artificial Intelligence Act, like they have their own webpage where you can go and you can look like, hey, how can we do this? How can it be improved? Um, but they're ahead of the game here, right? So like good on them. Like I said, the EU is always forward leaning when it comes to stuff like this. And this is just one of those things where, hey, this this is, we know this this has the potential to cause some issues that are not in line with, with what we want to do when it comes to um, protection of our citizens. So what's your thoughts on this, Ryan? No, I agree. They 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 definitely lean forward because uh, of a GDPR being um, like some say harsh, right? But just being uh, very thorough with okay, you're collecting information. This is how uh, this is the information that you're collecting. This is how you can purge that information. This is how you can receive um, information on the information they've collected on you. Things of that nature. So like businesses have to do a lot of 
um, they have to be careful and they have to do a lot of uh, mitigation and a lot of um, understanding their own systems, right? Like how will this impact the, the customer? How can a customer retrieve this information? So in order to be able to do that, you have to know your information inside and out. Like how am I collecting this information? How am I able to uh, make sure it's secure, things of that nature? So uh, it, it's it's good to see them step in. Um, however, um, I have to read through it a little bit more because like you said, like uh, if it's if it's low, then they're not going to regulate it. But if it starts to become, what were the terms? Because the terms are a little weird. Um, it was low, it was, here it is, low and minimum risk AI tools will not be reg regulated while the limited risk ones will need to be transparent. The high risk AI practices, however, will be strictly regulated. Um, and then it goes on to say this database should be freely and publicly accessible, easily to understand, and machine readable. It should also be user friendly and easily uh, navigable with search functionalities at minimum, allowing the general public to search the database for sp specific high risk systems, locations, categories of risk, and keywords. So they're going to keep basically a, a, a login ledger of AI systems and what their capabilities are which I think is is uh, great from a public standpoint. I think for business, that's going to be kind of complicated um, only because you have to make sure you're in the system, you update the system, and then as well as what information is publicly releasable and what isn't, right? Uh, so I think that's what's going to kind of hem up some companies. I think when it comes to government stuff, it will probably not go in the database. Or if it does, it'll be very limited on what information they give you about it. So, so let me ask you this. Do you think it's going to be that hard for them? Because they already they already do this on the regular, right? So like this, I, I realize it's going to be a little bit more work, mm -hmm. but this is not going to be too foreign to them. Not, not like if this was happening in the United States, I would say that implementation would, would probably leave something to be desired when it finally comes right. out. But in the EU, like this is this is kind of their wheelhouse, right? Like they right. know. Yeah, I think from their standpoint, but like anyone who like, so it's going to impact everybody though. Like, so like AI, I think they said the top three are the US, China, and then the UK. So the UK already put in policy um, as, because they're in the top three, right? They're like, we want to get ahead of this. We'll make sure we're, we're ready. Uh, but any policy that they like GDPR, any policy they put in place that has any uh, implications on uh, on individuals from the EU, which is a hum humongous population, right? has to be regulated at that policy. So like the US is gonna be impacted, uh, Canada, China, everybody is going to have to be able to uh, do the, to to mirror the steps the EU is doing because they they're, they set the tone. So either we have to be at the level of uh, this new, I, I, they don't really name it, name it. I have to look to see what they name it. Um, I, I think that, I think that is the name. I think it is called the. Is this that simple? Is the, like they they have a link in there, and it's called the AI Act, the Artificial Intelligence. Oh, Act. Okay. The, so yeah. yeah. So yeah. everyone will have to be at the same level as the AI Act, uh, if not more restrictive. So, like you said, like it, it, the U.S. was not probably. Uh, I'm sure we were thinking of something, right? Because there there is the um, the NIST RM, RMF. Uh, uh, for AI, but it's like in draft, it's still being worked, right? Um, so that will still be evolved on, that will come to fruition probably in the near future. But all the all of the U.S. tech companies that have AI that will in some way touch the EU or or one of its um, citizens will have to be on the same power as the AI Act, just, just the way it is. It's, it's, it's been signed, it's in law. And if you don't want, like, what was the fine? The fine was like 32 million pounds or 6%. Of your, uh, yeah, it's it says um, non-compliance with up to 30 million pounds or $32 million or 6% of global profits. And as we saw in the past few weeks, like they're, they're beating up Google, they're beating up uh, Amazon, they're beating up everybody. Like they're taking money from people and it, it's just the way it is because they're, they're, they are part of the global economy. So like to say, I guess to say, like, if you're a company right now who uh, does any any type of dealings or work with people who are from overseas, you will be impacted by this. Like someone from the EU will be in your system. So you will have to also uh, abide by these rules or humongous fines. Like nobody wants to pay 30 million pounds. They don't even know what that is. <laughs> 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 it does it does change right like it, it right yeah. so like right now it's 32 million us 
over six percent. Like, can you imagine uh, a Microsoft or an a uh, an Amazon or even a Google paying six percent of global profit? What does that even mean? These are trillion dollar companies. Apple. <laughs> yeah. So everyone will. Everyone right now is already uh, of that magnitude. So every company of that magnitude is already taking this information and they're sitting in the room right now, virtually or in person, figuring out like how do we comply with this standard because we can't we don't want to pay that money and and i think the, and i think the thing is like it, it, nobody wants to pay that money but like when, once they went and did this like they're trying to there were some eu lawmakers that were trying to have like a global summit to have everybody right on this you know what i mean so it's not like they're doing this in a vacuum and saying well this is what we're going to do you guys can do whatever you want to do but like you're talking about though ryan like the, it, it is a it is business is global you know what I mean? So it's not like it's it's going to stay amongst all those EU countries, right? They are going to do business with China, you know, mm -hmm. Italy, well, Italy, I think Italy might be in the EU. I'm not sure. <laughs> but <laughs> the US, <laughs> Australia, yeah. So, so, you know, I just started naming other countries. I was like, wait a minute, they're yeah. in the EU. <laughs> but yeah, no, so like it is a global thing. So like they're they're doing this on their end and then they're saying, hey, come in with us guys. Like, look at what we did and see how you guys can do the same thing. You know what I mean? Whether it be whether it be for selfish reasons, right? Whether to just keep them in compliance, you know what I mean? Or because they realize, hey, this is a threat that's going to affect, you know, especially when it comes to the top three, the other two being the U.S. and China, right? Yeah, and and I think I, I think it really is for the uh, for the for their people, right? It's like like they're going out of their way to make sure that everyone understands how this impacts them and how how do I get my information out of this? Like how do I how do I reduce my footprint? How do I find out what they're currently tracking on me? It's all good stuff. It's just uh, from a business stance, I can see them like, oh man, another one. <laughs> Here's another policy we have to figure out um and how to uh how to get there basically but again the eu is setting the tone like we did it with gdpr we're going to do it again with ai and we'll keep doing this because we need to protect our people um so us figure it out like how, how are you going to um uh fold yourself into this so it's not it's not this it's less of bend the knee and it's more like you said let's all get together but you guys are taking too long <laughs> Because AI is moving very rapidly, like people are already integrated into their business, for better or for worse. So it's like, how do we quickly protect people? Well, let's set let's set the tone, which they did uh, for very very quickly. Like you said, they're already thinking about this in uh, 2021 when AI was existed, but it was not to this extent. Like right now, everybody is scrambling. Either you want to get in front of it, you want to make sure you integrate it in some way. You don't want to like the FOMO is real, regardless of how how um, actual robust AI is right now, which I, I believe it to be pretty robust. Like it's out here writing papers for people. It's out here asked to rewrite the intro to the uh, the podcast. It basically gave me the same intro back. So that to me means it's perfect. <laughs> it's been blessed off by the AI guys. <laughs> but I, I, I say all that to say, like it's only going to become more impactful and we need to already have regulation and policy in place. And then Perhaps it might be too harsh and we have to ease up or adjust or, or what have you, but it's better to have something than to have nothing. And as of uh, a few weeks ago, we had nothing. So it is what it is. But I think that this will continue to be an ongoing article because I can already see non-compliance being a thing and then setting the tone again, like, hey, big company, give us 6% of your global um, uh, uh how does that even work? Like, where does that money go? Like, we take six percent of a trillion dollars. What do you do with it? Yeah, what do you what do you do with that fine? Right? Like, yeah, what do you do with that fine? Do you give it to the people who were impacted? And and honestly, I don't I don't know if it'll ever come to that with the big companies, right? Like, they have the manpower to keep from getting in that type of trouble, right? Like, that is enough to scare them to be like, I'm not trying to give you, you right. Know, I don't even want to go into uh, you know the I mean? court system with you to yeah. to settle. I just <laughs> I'm just gonna get right. <laughs> But those smaller, but those smaller companies having to pay, you know, thirty million pounds, thirty-two million U.S. Yeah. whatever it be at the time, depending on the exchange rate, um, that's that's going to hurt a lot more, right? And they may not have, like, you see these companies out here that are firing their cyber divisions now. You know, they're getting rid of their IT folks and their cyber, so yeah. it's even harder for them. So, yeah, we'll see. But definitely continue to tune in. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, hit us up at all the websites that go by our name. If you hit me up personally, I'm at Rye Rye Security Guy. I am on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, there you go, uh, and Twitter. Stay safe, stay secure.
Thank you.